Saturday Showdown. Genji Sports Day, KT Rooster. But this does mean that if they aren't able to play around Deft, if they're unable to punish the bot side here for KT, which I think is going to be tough given how well Aiming and Lahens have been playing. Aiming in particular, Lahens has had a few moments left and right. Have yeah. shored themselves up. It is a beautiful draft, though, that they have for us here. D plus a little bit more on the all or nothing side. Let's jump out of the rift for game number one. Uh, doesn't really get the job done as uh, is it, he is, is all we scorching. So we at least we at least yeah. double. We at least double. There we go. I was, I was about to lead into that. Uh, also, Keen is all Bible. Okay, going a little bit aggressive nice. as Def deciding he wants to throw some axes at aiming, and it's working out quite nicely because Lahens doesn't have pulverize because he used it on the pony. Uh, nicely played here by DRX in the early stages. Like, uh, yeah. If you've never oh oh that's a flash forward. Aiming's gonna have to cleanse, but. That is more axes flying forward as Deft and Bible are pulling no punches whatsoever. Respawning is because he wants to make sure that they can contest earlier and set up. Yeah, there is the pulverize though. Emperor's Divide pushes Canyon all the way back and first blood goes to aiming gorgeously orchestrated here by KT is now Keen. He gets equalized, but Kanner is not going to find too much value on it. The Rift Herald is going to come down. Shoemaker should be able to claim some of these plates, as we can see. There it goes. Bit of extra money for the LeBlanc and for Canyon, who's now stealing away some popcorn chickens, because on this control ward, going to be spotted out as Kanner. It might die for him. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, um, it's not a great time for Keen towards his top side on the Renekton. He hasn't uh, died, that is important, but 20 CS is going to be the gap. It's only extending as well as Dominus going to be used just to clear out the wave. And now Canyon looking to come in there. There's the Vault Breaker. Cease and Assist is going to be used on his life. And the Equalizer was completely unnecessary, but it got an assist. Yeah, that's uh, the combo we were talking about. His Bible. Oh, yeah, Hepa pulverizes. He crashes back down and will just sacrifice half of his health bar. Okay, aiming as now Kana is throwing harpoons around, but let's have a look to see whether this is going to work out. Magnus Storm towards the bottom side, stand aside, and there's the Whirling Death as aiming goes golden, but he cannot move out of the way. The Pulverize kind of amazing as Canyon going to take the kill, but it's another great crash down. And is the caching going to come through? Oh! Yes, it is. Death throws the axe, and that is two for D plus, one of them being worth a whole lot more. He's sitting on almost 3k gold, Atlas! Oh, man. And more importantly, because of what is happening in the top side, Keen could have joined the fight. <laughs> uh, He's just getting barbecued. The standing there with Q running. Hasn't really been a part of the game, uh, but has been able to just farm, and once he has a two-item spike, is going to be really relevant. As Deft. Um, Showmaker is going to come on over as well, and the what? Unbreakable Will is a little bit more breakable than we thought. Def just wills the death through, and that is going to pick up the kill onto Lahens. Didn't even have, like, the ultimate wasn't enough. Normally, Alistair's are pretty okay when they can press their R button. This is not his first unforced death, as he just feels, as you say, very safe with the ultimate. Uses it too late, and that's another cash in here for Def. We'll just kill you. Oh, no. Please. Speaking of just kill you, Cease and Desist comes through. Canyon underneath the turret as the Equalizer comes down. Canyon is kind of almost dead, but uh, he's not. And Canyon's going to be able to tank up the last couple of turret shots. That is another barbecued crocodile. Oh. The fact that Kana is as fat as he is works out very nicely as Showmaker. Yeah, Nature's Grasp going to come through. There is the flash. Bramble Smash is too good, though. Emperor's Divide and Showmaker is dead. Great pick up here from Cuz. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Because no. They should be able to, though. I don't think you can really contest her as KT. It looks like going to try. Yeah, Cuz going to twist an advance over, and there is Canyon making his way in. Cuz taking a lot of damage. It's a great pulverize, but it's still the Maokai that's going to fall down. Keen makes his way in, though. Emperor's Divide comes down, and it's fantastic for KT. Kana trying to do the barbecuing, and BDD does go down, but it is still a huge win for KT. Aiming still massively full health, and that is going to be a Baron for KT. This is what we were talking about. Exactly the problem here for D Plus is actually executing on this. Now, this Baron uh, looks like he might be giving it up. They are also getting pretty low. Bible doesn't have. Oh, I, he's going to try. Oh, he's yeah. definitely going to try. As the Hex Flash does come through and he's not able to get it done. That is going to be the kill. Onto the Rel. Lands really great follow up. And that is going to be the delayed, the staggered ace. Zero. 
at the end of this as Canyon looks for Keen. It's another equalizer. Cease and desist comes through. And that should be a dead Renekton. So, Look trying to stop this Baron from punish. doing too much more. But Empress Divide does come down and Kana will be taken out. Top laner for top laner as Blast Cone. Canyon trying to get out of the way of these Qs. He doesn't have Flash and the Headbutt Pole will be able to keep him in place. He's going to move Lehens away. Is the Blast Cone going to be avoided? And Canyon now just taking them on a merry jaunt. There should be a twisted advance and a whole bunch of turrets. So Canyon. Well and truly dead. Bit of time, like, yeah, but that uh, might be the Infernal Soul going over, or the Soul Point, rather, going over, right? Uh, as a uh, hold up. Yep, season what? this comes through. Crashdown comes on in as well. As now Showmaker's moving on over, and Lahens, I think, is just dead again. Yep, he's going to be taken down. So I guess the overall trade is a two for two. KT favored as uh, all yeah. Canyon. Yeah, Canyon trying to get himself out of there. Season assist comes down on to aiming, but he just pops him. And that is going to be another kill. Bible to be taken out. Deft is just headbutted back into the waiting arms of KT. And they will destroy him. Showmaker now trying to deal with minion waves as a bit of a sign of desperation here as Keen just stands on top. He is going to be able to dash after the LeBlanc. And I think that Showmaker might be taken out here. Yep, that is going to be a cue from Severum. And Aiming picks that one up as well as Kana. He's just going to take a blue buff and uh, pretend that nothing else happened. It's just Amy has so much damage. Yeah. It is just insane. And now we've got a second Baron for KT to play with. 30 seconds on the Infernal Soul as well. And it is all coming up KT towards this later stage of the game. Inner turret, probably not worth defending here. But Deft is still going to throw some uh, axes forward. Canyon looking for an opportunity as he does go golden. And the Nature's Grasp is fantastic. Crashdown, not going to say Bible here, but the Equalizer, fantastic into the back line. It's just not doing quite enough damage. BDD, he goes golden. Showmaker looking for aiming in this back line. But BDD is still alive. Keen also goes golden to block Deft from getting over there. And the Rumble will be taken out. Showmaker cannot go toe to toe with aiming right now. And DK, I think this is where the base is going to go down. At least the inhibitor turret in the mid lane going to be taken down first. And KT. They weathered the storm and now they are going to destroy the DK Nexus here in game number one. Death does get his full health back and uh, there are some low health bars, but there is so much CC available. This Nexus turret not going to last very long at all as aiming just dives forward. It's a double for the Aphelios and KT. They take game one. So much work, but you can see it in the gold difference. That was where that one play happened. It led to the Baron. Bible wasn't able to steal it. See what is going to be the consideration, and it is going to be the Ezreal in the end. So wanting to be that little bit more self-sufficient, have that self-peel. But looking at Akon's face, he's pretty happy with what D-plus have for themselves. It's going to be a tough one here for KT, but if there's any team that you can rely on, it would 100% be them right now. So let's jump into it. <laughs> Heck funny, yeah. funny how that works. Yeah, it's beautiful. As a showmaker, obviously, uh, unfortunately, going to be uh, stuck with a W only. Should be able to do well against BDD, as BDD did go for Fleet here. Um, can Bible and Deft move? The answer is kind of no right now. Maybe yes, kind of? Okay, sort of yes. Mystic shots are oh, connecting, as is the Calibrum Q as well. The cleanse has to come out. Bible takes it as a chance to engage. The Ignite is down onto Aiming, who can't quite fight this one. Dustbring is good, and the battle for the Scuttle. This time will be won by DK. Um, that's 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 what we're fighting for. Hey, that's it. This is a great trade. You get uh, you get a hex flash. Yeah. So you get access to your own hex flash. You get beautiful. A cleanse, you get cousin's flash, and you get double scuttle for your I need to hit six as soon as humanly possible champion. Well, uh, Bible is kind of out of position here as the hook is going to come through. Deft just going to throw out some abilities, but that's First Blood going over to Aiming and Cuz great work on the game. So providing the opportunity is Bible. No. Oh, surely not. As he does Hex Flash over, but uh, he's going to have to crash back down again as Lahans has found Showmaker. Does get the Flash out, and KT say that'll be enough for now. And now he's going to have to stick around and try and hold on to this wave. Canyon moves in, has a Rift Herald, Cuz moving on top well. of a ward. This is a TF. Yeah, full information here for DK, but KT can always bring this Twisted Fate over. He's out of range right now, though. Connors, so they get the charge, the and now river. they're looking for a Drake. And 
continuous cancel does mean as a death. Oh dear, there is a death standing a little bit too far forward, but now he does have the rail down here. Paranoia comes forward as they get the possession. Still Bible able to get a bunch of work done. The, oh. the Heartbreaker comes in and Canyon gets into the brush. Now Cuz is fighting against Bible here as he's back to regular Viego, but they're not able to kill him. Showmaker moving down Amy and now with here. Destiny down as well as Aiming moving in. I don't think they're going to be able to do too much more. Showmaker tanking up a lot as the Trinity Force from Aiming. These Mystic shots really starting to hurt. It's now Cuz moving over and this Drake wasn't actually taken. Yeah. And now it is no gold lead whatsoever. Uh, 4D plus at this stage of the game, of course. Okay, Kanner in trouble. He's going to have to flash. Equalize a decently positioned, but it doesn't do anything. And that is going to be KT picking up a kill for Keane on this top side, who this time around has a pretty decent CS advantage over Kana. Still will get there eventually, but Showmaker will get a lot of damage down here. BDD. Oh dear, the crash down comes through. There's the equalizer, and BDD is just burning, burning, burning. There it is. Kana picks up the kill. And Keane is going to walk on over and should be able to stop this inner turret from going down. The Rift Turret also secured for KT, so not end of the world. BDD still has his ultimate available. The Hens is waiting. There's no control here, really. Yeah, Hook is going to connect there onto Bible, though, as he just explodes. The Equalizer comes down as now Keane has dived in. Canyon, though, has overextended, and it's a double kill for the Crocodile. Aiming, still free hitting from the backside of the fight, and Showmaker was nowhere in sight. The Hook is going to connect once again, and now they're diving with the Flame Spitter. Does so much work, Lands is going to go down, but they do get their target. And now the Heartbreak is starting to rain down. Cuz looking for the kill on the Showmaker, who does survive. But him and Deft are the only ones, and surely she gets a headache, but she's doing a heck of a lot of work here for KT. Still, she's not going to be able to get her third charge, but you'll take two. That's pretty high value. That Destiny coming forward. But uh, now it is going to come through. Is Canyon going to press ult is the question as Gold Cut. Twisted Fate can't really do anything right here as the Moonlight Vigil comes down, but the stopwatch is great here from the Renekton. They take down the Nocturne and Keen is still alive. Bible now trying to limp his way out. Good flash from Showmaker. Yeah. Uh, you might as well start it. They are going to do done. so. Keen is moving in, doesn't have his teleport, so he's not going to be on the bottom side with Kana. It's going down so fast. Yeah, DK, they are going to get the bad news that this one has been started. Teleport immediately going to get channeled as Bible goes in so early. He flashes away though, and now Showmaker is looking for aiming in the back line. Oh! And there is the execution this time. Canyon is going to be able to find it. Bible is taken down, but Lahens is going to get the same treatment. Keen is a lot of shutdown gold if they can get there, and that. I think possibly counts as a team fight win. There is at least that, Chronicler. Finally see the combo come through. It's really starting to hurt. And now, battle lines once again drawn. Keen is Dominus. He has. The pre-Dominus does come through and not getting a lot of value here is the distortion. Going to be returned to. That was a little bit dangerous there from Showmaker. Have his ult. This Does Elder is starting to get really Bible. low as there's the Magnus Storm. Bible gets into the back line. He goes gold and the Equalizer is just massive. Down to the GA goes the Renekton as Bible is taken out. Cuz is going to fall as well though as Keen running amok in this back line. And he's going to be able to take down the Aphelios. Keen, the Golden Canner is going to be there but it's not enough. And KT, they will tear them apart in the end. And it looked like it was going kind of alright until it was a disaster for D+. Even five stopwatches are not enough. The health force gets so low, but the damage just isn't there. And KT gonna take a, que a quick and clean 2-0. Nothing to see here. And this game was even cleaner than game number one. There goes the Nexus, KT 2-0. A complete collapse, and I just don't think that is going to be the case. And yeah, the damage numbers are good, but unfortunately 4D plus doesn't really come together. Death not able to have a big impact in this one either. No, bit and, middling uh, there. Yeah. In the Thank you guys. This is Deer for the POG interview translation. We are here joined by BDD and Keen on the side of KT Rolster, who just secured their 11th consecutive win.
What an amazing milestone. Let's hear how you feel. It was a big match for us, but I'm really glad that I we won. And Kian, I think it was a difficult match, but I'm very relieved that we won. BDD, you got a POG with your Azir again in game one, and as expected from BDD's masterpiece Azir, so uh, game one seems quite unfavorable considering the 6k gold difference. So, what was the team's call for a turnaround? Uh, our, our team's comp actually does uh, become better over time so i think we were just trying to stall and then make sure that we win a big team fight taking a look at a baron team fight or the the replay here how did you find this amazing shuffle angle the enemy actually forced a, uh, a skirmish at first and it created a pretty good opening for me and it ended up creating a really nice picture for us. And it seems like KT's confidence uh, when it comes to team fights is on another, on another level. So it feels like every time you guys open a team fight, it, you don't even think about losing. So is that the mindset that the players actually have? Like whenever we uh, do team fights, I don't think we def like definitely don't go in thinking that we're gonna lose. And I feel like every time we do fight, we do win. That's probably why we have so so much confidence. And Kian, yeah, I feel like team fights always end up in our favor, and I feel like I have no pressure because whenever we lose, I just blame someone else. And Kian. Both games one and two, you had to face Rumble as Renekton, and you seem to have a hard time laning in game one. But in game two, you seem to breeze through the laning phase. So, did you improve in that short period of time, or what changed after game one? I feel like. Uh, in game one, yeah, Lingy Fae was diff pretty difficult, but uh, BDD's TF actually gave a lot of pressure in game two, which made it a little better. And BDD, you have a 0-9 record with Azir, and Azir was banned in the first phase of game two, so what did you think of today's draft? I feel like banning my Azir is pretty predictable. Uh, so we didn't really do anything differently, we just went with whatever we had been preparing with. And Keen, you played well in the laning phase, but you had a huge moment in the last crucial team fight. So let's take a look at the replay here. So it felt like it was like an unfavorable picture, so how did you pull this kind of a play? I feel like, uh, yeah, the Rel pulled us in really well, and it felt like we were going to lose, but when I, uh, when my Guardian Angel procced, I felt like, oh, wait, this is actually winnable. So that's what happened. And let's see, we can hear, I love you, Keen, in mic check. Keen saying, Kim Keen, POG. Thoughts on I love you, Kim Keen? Uh, whenever Cuz is on the camera, he gets way too excited, so I think that's probably why. So if he's not on the camera, would he not say it? Oh, definitely not, never. Uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's not true. Uh, he doesn't actually love me. It, we are in a strictly business relationship. <laughs> and cuz fighting and in the next match it seems like you guys probably hear that you guys have a good team atmosphere and that you guys have a good relationship with each other and this portrait that aiming drew you kind of proves that point so how would you rate this portrait oh yeah he did a great job 
I wonder if I'll ever get a chance to do the same and return the favor. And Amy claimed you as the gum fairy or the tooth fairy, and we saw your interview full of fairy. And you said, I will come up with the nicknames my teammates will despise, so we will look forward to that. Yeah, Amy, his nickname senses. Uh, I feel like I will. It'll be more appropriate for me to give him a nickname after the season, uh, as it may create some problems, so I will wait until then. What about you, BDD? How would you rate the portrait? I feel like it looks like a potato. I do kind of see Keen in this portrait, though. So, yes, it's a good portrait. <laughs> After today's clean victory, Gen G is waiting for you this upcoming Saturday showdown. Many, many fans are looking forward to that match. BDD, uh, what are your predictions on uh, the, what will determine the game? All the lanes will be important, but I feel like as long as I can deny Chovy, it would be a good uh, victory. And Keen, all the uh, Genji players are really good, but we are just as good, so I believe that we will be able to win. And BDD, what's your resolution to the next game? We'll make sure that we prepare well and display a good performance for you guys. And Keen? We'll be sure that we win. And we will keep trying hard. This will be the end of the interview with BDD and Kian, and back to the space.